After the revolution in 2011, Libya was like this beautiful, classy train riding towards stability and riding towards prosperity. But on the way, the gears picked up and it sort of got off rail. And so now it's heading towards disaster, towards destruction. And really it needs a commitment from people on the ground to step up and put the country first and look at their fellow countrymen and try to better the lives of the people that are living inside the country. I'm Malik Trena, Al Jazeera's reporter in Libya. And between us, I fear it's gonna take a lot more than elections to solve Libya's problems. August, 2011. Rebel forces from all around Libya were gathering to finish the fight and end the Gaddafi regime in Sir. You have to understand these are people that, they're not soldiers. You have doctors and students, mechanics, teachers, trying to bring about freedom to their country. If they weren't in any way trained soldiers and can handle their weapons, this army of vehicles heading our way, we could just see people super excited on top of the trucks, you know, saying, Allahu Akbar. God is great, Allahu Akbar, God is great. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. The war is done, we've got Gaddafi. So they took Gaddafi's body to a place in southern Misrata called the Tunisian Market, and they put him in this walk-in refrigerator. People were driving a thousand kilometers to come see Gaddafi's dead body themselves. Gaddafi ordered the death of over 1,200 political prisoners in the prison of Abu Salim, and that happened in a matter of three hours. We met with a lot of very emotional people, mothers that had their sons killed in this massacre, come in and like, just, I want to see Gaddafi's body myself. I want to know that this guy is dead. I just remember seeing Gaddafi, and he's like this tiny guy. I just remember being so confused, like, how is it this little man was able to do this to his people, cause all this destruction and chaos? I think people were just extremely hopeful that Libya could become a free and democratic country and they can thrive in a new era for Libya. But things just took a really sharp turn for the worst. A former military officer named Khalifa Haftar announced on YouTube that he wanted to see a transition of government. This is when Eastern and Western Libya start to divide. We start seeing two governments, two rival legislative houses in Libya. And then the Khalifa Haftar launches a military offensive for 14 months, pounding and shelling Tripoli. Haftar's forces were forced to retreat back to their power base in eastern Libya. This is really where we were able to see the aftermath and the brutality of the fighting. We went to Tarhuna, the city southeast of Tripoli. We met this one family, and 22 of the men in her family were killed. Every man in her family, brothers, fathers, brother-in-laws, husbands, were all taken. It was later revealed that they were put into these mass graves. Whenever a body is recovered from a grave, you'll have dozens of families coming in trying to see if, like, is this my son? Is this my daughter? Is this my child? I remember this young child, he just starts crying, and he's just saying, why me? Why have you killed my father and my uncles and my grandfather? What, what did we do? Where's the justice? Where's the accountability? This is a person who's you know, 10 years old saying, if I don't get my justice, when I grow up, I'll, I'll get it with my own hands. Saif al-Islam Gaddafi was Muammar's second son, uh, and he was looked at as the successor to rule Libya during the revolution. He came out in the speech on national TV where he was saying, this is gonna lead to civil war, uh, there's gonna be rivers of blood. In his speech, he, he wags his finger. Later on, when rebel forces captured Saif, there was a lot of speculation that they cut his fingers off to sort of teach him a lesson. Now we're seeing Saif al-Islam come back into the political scene and he's wearing the same outfit that his father was wearing in that famous speech. He shows up in southern Libya and he's running for president of the country. Elections always bring hope and a chance for a new beginning, for Libyans to set aside all their differences, to vote who they want in power. But without a constitutional framework, that just opens the door for a lot of people to question and not respect the results for an election. <laughs> 